Insider tip. If you want to hear Julia talk about her favorite recipe, just ask her about roast chicken. <laughs> hey, do you like it's roast chicken? true. I could wax poetic about roast chicken for hours, and in fact, you've witnessed this. So today, I'm not going to wax poetic. I'm going to make it for you. All right. And, you know, I make roast chicken all the time. It is my number one favorite meal. I have a handful of recipes I cycle through. This is currently the top slot because the cooking method is brilliant. The skin gets so crisp. And while the chicken cooks, you get to make gravy. And gravy is our favorite beverage. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. This is a four pound broiler. And the one thing, again, I love about this recipe is you make gravy alongside the roasting chicken. You don't have to wait for the drippings. Lovely. And part of that is because we're gonna use what's in this bag. We're gonna use the giblets and the neck piece. And there's a ton of flavor in that. So this recipe really makes good use of that. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. Now on to the chicken. This method uses the broiler exclusively. So in order for that to work, the broiler to get that skin crisp, you have to make it a single layer. You have to spatchcock it or butterfly mm -hmm. it. So what I'm gonna do is just cut out the backbone using a good pair of poultry shears. And really, if you do this a lot, you definitely wanna invest in a good pair of shears. Agree. All right, so now I'm just gonna take the backbone, I'm gonna cut it into pieces again using the scissors. That's more surface area for the gravy. I'm going for about one inch pieces. There's a spot there in the middle that has a big bone that you're not gonna get too small. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. And now for the chicken. First, we wanna tuck the wings. We wanna get these out of the way because these will burn <laughs> under yes. the broiler. So you just tuck them back behind like that. And now to flatten it, I'm just gonna press on it. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on this. This is half a teaspoon of veg oil. We're just going to put this on the skin side. Rub it all in there. And now I pre-measured the salt and pepper because at this point I'm all chickeny and I don't want to get it all over my pepper mill and my salt mill. So this is a teaspoon of table salt and half a teaspoon of pepper. One more trick. I'm going to take a paring knife. You're just going to poke holes through the skin about three quarters of an inch apart. That just helps that fat render and gets the skin good and crisp. And sometimes there's a little extra flap down here. The skin, I'm actually going to cut that off because that's good flavor for the gravy. Oh, OK. All right, now for the back side, just going to add a little bit of salt. This is half a teaspoon of salt. All right, last but not least, we're just going to tie the legs together using some butcher's twine. There we go. That just prevents them from splaying out during roasting, so it looks a little more tidy when you carve it. Now, here I have a skillet with a teaspoon of veg oil. If you could heat that up over high heat, that'd be great. I'm gonna go wash my hands. Sounds good. How's the oil doing? It's smoking. Perfect. Time to add the chicken. Now, we're using a skillet because we wanna get it good and hot. That'll start cooking the chicken from the underside. Oh, good that, sound. That's a good sound. All right, so now we're gonna put this into the oven. Let me grab that for you. Thank you, thank you. Now this oven is off at this point, which is good. We're starting in a cold oven. As I mentioned, we're gonna broil the chicken. The oven will heat up really fast, gives the chicken time to acclimate, which is good. Now you wanna put the pan in the center of the rack as best you can. We're gonna rotate the handle halfway through. That way it gets evenly browned. But the most important thing to note is the distance between the rack and the broiler element. You want it to be 12 to 13 inches. 12 to 13 is the magic number. That's looking good. Time to turn on the oven. Now I'm gonna turn on the broiler. And if your broiler has multiple settings, use the highest one. All right, now we're off to the races. That's gonna roast for 25 minutes before we rotate it. Okay. Okay, so that chicken is snuggled up in the broiler. <laughs> Time to make the gravy. All right, so here are all those bits I saved, the backbone, the giblets, the neck, into a nice large pan they go. We're gonna create fond using these bits and a little bit of chicken broth to start. So this okay. is a cup of chicken broth. We're gonna bring this to a vigorous simmer. I'm gonna monitor the heat so it's always simmering. We're actually gonna reduce this down to a sec. We're gonna dry it out and create a fond with the fat and the drippings mm. that come off the bones. Okay. And that's gonna be the base of our gravy. So now we're gonna chop up some vegetables for the gravy. No surprise here, classic mirepoix, which is generally two parts onion to one part carrot and celery. And I'm gonna cut them pretty small to make lots of surface area. I wanna get as much flavor out of these vegetables as I can during this short simmering time. Whatever the vegetable is, a carrot or celery, cut them into long lengths like this, then line them all up. Cut right through them into small little bits. All right, there we have the mirepoix. Here we have one garlic clove peeled. I'm just gonna smash this. That'll go in right like that. And then we have 
some parsley and some thyme. All right, so it's been about 12 minutes. It smells amazing. Mm. Kind of roasty chicken heaven. Yeah, it's good. So you can see all the liquid has evaporated. Now that fat has come out, and now we're gonna get some browning and build that fond on the bottom of the pot, and that is key for making gravy from these little trimmed bits. Oh, that is some good looking fond. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna let it go any further. Now it's time to add the vegetables. All right, here are four sprigs of parsley and a few sprigs of thyme. All right, I'm gonna turn this down to medium. I'm gonna let this cook until the vegetables soften. That can take seven or eight minutes. Mm. And while that's happening, I'm gonna use all that moisture coming out of the vegetables right. to help scrape up the fond. All right, so. Wow. Yeah. Look at all that beautiful fond on the bottom of the pot. Deep, dark, roasty flavor. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna add some liquid. This is a quarter cup of white wine. All right, scraping up those brown bits. And then we're gonna add some more broth. So now I'm adding three cups of chicken broth. Oh, now is when you wanna take your time, scrape all that browning into the liquid. And we're gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes. It's gonna reduce by about half. Now time to check the chicken. Beautiful already. Isn't it beautiful? All right, so now I'm just rotating the skillet so the handle's facing the other way, but the skillet is still in the center. Smack in the center. Yep. All right, closing the oven door, another 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, gorgeous. I know. She's a pretty bird. Stunning. <laughs> now I'm draping the towel over this handle. Handle's hot, don't burn yourself. <laughs> All right, again, we're looking for an internal temperature of 155 degrees. 56, perfect. So typically we cook chicken until the breast registers 160 to 165. So 155 is on the low side, but that's good here because the amount of carryover is gonna be more than usual because we use the broiler. So the hotter the cooking environment, the more carryover the meat will have. Intense cooking, intense carryover. That's it. All right, so getting this out of the skillet. So we're gonna let this rest for 15 minutes uncovered, letting that skin stay good and crisp. Now I'm gonna take all these drippings gonna pour them into a bowl. That's flavor. Mm-hmm. So now we're just gonna let those drippings sit for about five minutes, let them separate, and we'll use the flavorful stuff in the gravy. Speaking of which, here is the broth that we've been cooking down. Now I'm gonna strain it into a nice big bowl. Oh, ho, ho. look at that broth. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. mm, pressing all the last little bits of liquid gold out of this Strainer, okay, set that aside. We're gonna make a quick roux with two tablespoons of unsalted butter. All right, so we're just gonna melt this butter over medium heat. Mm. All right, so that butter is melted. Now I'm gonna add two and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour. That's just making a roux that will thicken the stock into a gravy. And I'm gonna let this roux cook for a good five minutes and let it get nice and toasty brown because that adds good flavor. All right, you can see that roux is a nice golden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna whisk this broth back in. Now I'm gonna take all these drippings. So you can see the fat has come to the surface. I'm just gonna use a spoon and spoon that fat right off the top. That looks pretty good. All right, whisk those drippings in. Now we're just gonna simmer this for about five minutes, let it thicken up, and then we can eat. All right. Your waiting time is over. Thank goodness. <laughs> just gonna carve up this little chicken. I'm gonna do kind of a rustic family style carve. I'm not gonna take it off the bone, but I am gonna separate all the pieces. Now the legs are basically held onto the chicken <laughs> by skin, so it's pretty easy to cut them off. Look at that, gorgeous. Yes. All right, cut that off. Score the skin. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, goodness. I'm just gonna give you the breast. Okay. I just am. I gotta say, the breast is the test, isn't it? A little gravy? Yes, please. A lot of gravy? Yes, please. All right. Uh, a little bit of meat. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know the type of gravy that you, you spend all day in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. This has that developed flavor. And if I hadn't been standing next to you and see you making this, I would think you had spent all day doing it. Yeah. It's a clever, clever recipe. Mm. Every bit of that is juicy, moist, mm -hmm. not overcooked at all. This was perfect. And I would expect nothing less from the roast chicken queen herself. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Thank you.
Well, if you want to make this soul-warming, delicious chicken at home, spatchcock the chicken for even cooking. Start the chicken in a preheated skillet, and then broil the chicken on a rack that's 12 inches from the broiler. Meanwhile, make a broth from the chicken trimmings and finish the gravy with roasted drippings. So from America's Test Kitchen, a surefire, satisfying broiled chicken with lots of gravy. <laughs> and I mean lots of gravy. Mm. Hey, your plate's looking a little dry there. Oh, yeah, right on the, oh. That's what friends are for. That's a good friend right there. Yep. Get a straw. <laughs> mm. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.